it has been a little bit. Um, the last time I did a Q&A video, I was about 13, and watching it back is so embarrassing. So definitely updating. Um, there's some new questions that I'm going to answer because my life looks a lot different. If you watch my last video, you saw my life is kind of completely different now. Um, if you didn't watch that, I am newly paralyzed and I broke my neck, paralyzed from the chest down and I'm in recovery right now. So right now my life kind of consists of rehab and regaining strength and mobility and just all the fun things that you have already learned in life, but I'm learning in a different way with my new body. Uh, oh, Kevin's so cute in the background. Anyways, um, I asked y'all to ask me questions on Instagram and I'm gonna answer them and go into that. And so you can know a little bit more about me, 17 year old Michaela. All right, so I know y'all are super interested and questions about my accident and knowing uh, the full details and I'll be answering a lot of those but first I'm gonna answer a few questions that aren't related to the accident. Where did you get Kevin's name from? Okay so if you don't know Kevin is my cat and it's a girl cat and uh, I just wanted a cat I didn't care if it was a girl or a boy and I knew I wanted to name it Kevin and it just happened that I got a girl cat so Kevin the girl cat, that's simple as that. What does your tattoo say? All right, so I have two tattoos, and the first one is a outline of a heart on my pinky, matching with my sister. I don't know if you can see it or not. Uh, you'll see it in a lot of my posts, but it's like a pinky promise. As you know, her and I are very close. We got matching ones uh, a year ago, and that was my first one. And then I have one on like my bra line, under boob, I guess, rib area and it's the word honey, and it's in my papa's handwriting, and that one's super special to me. He's like one of my like favorite people. All right, and then the reason I got it that it says honey is because my papa calls me his honey girl, and he's my honey boy, and he's called me that since, I think since I was really little, and him and I have always just had like a special connection, so yeah. Do you have your driver's license? I do not. Uh, I'm 17, don't have my driver's license. Even before my accident um, and everything, I was so scared of driving and just didn't like it, so I just didn't get it. I had my permit, uh, but just wasn't interested in it, and I, I don't really like to uh, go by the steps of life, I guess, or the route of life that you're supposed to take, and driving wasn't a priority to me, and my family didn't really care, so I just didn't get it. You're probably wondering uh, if I drive now or if I plan on it, and I actually do. I think I've matured a little bit and just kind of taken some time away from everything, and I'm eager to learn, um, and they have accessible cars that I'll be able to drive. Obviously, it'll look a little different than how you drive. Um, I'll be driving all with my hands, and even though my fingers don't work, they have a lot of different technological advancements that can be put in your cars like hand controls and I'll be able to drive just like anyone else uh, just in a little different way. What are you most looking forward to in 2022? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I think what I'm most looking forward to in the year of 2022 is just really savoring every moment and not taking anything for granted, trying to be on my phone less and spend more time with those that I love, and I think just travel as much as I can. Um, being in the situation that I was in and having so many things taken away from me so quickly um, and being in the hospital and in rehab for so long, it really changes your kind of aspect on life and I think it gives you a new pair of eyes and I think I've just really been able to see what matters to me and in my life and um, kind of focus on that. That's just what I want to do in 2022 is worry less, just be happy. What's the best thing about life right now? There's so many good things about life right now. Um, I think, oh, that's a good one. I think right now 
it's just that my full focus gets to be on recovery. Um, I think I'm going to do classes next semester, but as of right now, I'm not doing any classes. Um, I really don't have any responsibilities, I guess, other than just getting better and improving and getting stronger. And I think that's something that not a lot of people have the opportunity to ever do. And so I'm really um, taking advantage of that and kind of sleeping in and watching a lot of TV and just doing what my doctors and my therapists tell me to do and just get as strong and get as healthy and get as mentally tough as I can. And I just, I think that's pretty awesome that I have this opportunity to only focus on getting better and I have no distractions. So I'm like really stepping on the gas pedal with that one and taking advantage of that. Now we're gonna get into questions about the accident. Okay, so as you know, it was a very traumatic event and so I don't like to talk a lot about the details and what exactly happened in the accident. I don't feel comfortable talking about it and sharing it with people. Um, those that need to know, know, and I don't, as of right now, feel comfortable sharing. It is still a very fresh topic. Um, so I'm working through it, but I'm going to share what I feel comfortable sharing. And then if you want to know more, I've done interviews with like news stations and um, on our my website, you can read a little bit more about the accident. Uh, and then my website is just MichaelaNoble.com if you want to know more about that. But all right, let's get into questions about the accident and what my life looks like now. What do you remember thinking the first time you woke up after the accident? Ooh, good question. Okay, so I never went unconscious the whole time. Um, I was awake when the accident happened, in the ambulance, at the hospital, and then obviously until the surgery happened. Um, but I remember when I hit the floor, I was in the grass outside, and I remember when I hit the ground, it hurt because I felt my face and like my throat and my neck, and it hurt really bad, and I just knew my neck was in a lot of pain, and I hit my nose and like my mouth, I think I bit my lip or like my tongue or something, and so when you hit your nose really hard, you know how that feels. But it was like that, but like through my whole entire body, and then I just knew I couldn't feel anything below my neck. So I just was like, knew like, ow, this really hurt. Um, but it was just kind of like an overall, just like, I kind of knew I was paralyzed. It's, can't really explain it. Uh, it's not something I've ever felt before or that I feel like I could describe, but it was just like, oh, I can't feel my legs. Oh, I can't feel my arms. Oh, I can't feel any of this. Like, I'm not gonna try and move like, I know I'm gonna be laying here until I get help. If that makes sense. It's not something that's easy to put into words, I guess. Did you have feeling in your legs in the ambulance ride? Mm, all right, so no, I did not. I had no feeling below my neck. Um, in the ambulance or when I had the injury happen and that was the way it was for a few weeks. I regained feeling back in my arms, I think after the first or second week, um, and then gained movement in one arm and then slowly in the other, uh, but it was very minimal. And then I think three weeks after the injury, I gained feeling in my legs and then, which carried throughout my whole body. Um, so I think it was like three or four weeks out, I was finally able to feel my whole body but only move my arms. Um, I'm gonna go on a tangent. I could talk about all this for hours, but basically I broke my C6. If you want, you can look up a picture and what it affects. To sum it up, it basically affects my whole body and I'm paralyzed from nipple line down. Will you still be able to graduate high school on time? Yes. So long story short, I skipped my junior year of high school. So technically I was gonna graduate a whole, well, Legitimately, I was graduating high school a year early, um, and then obviously I'm not in school this year now. So when I go back to school, it'll be like I'm right on track and I'll be graduating with my original class. How have your college plans changed since the accident? 
Ooh, okay, so I was planning on sharing in college, uh, looking at a few different colleges, talking to some coaches, touring, practicing with the teams, everything, all that fun stuff. Obviously now that's not going to happen. So I think that changes a lot because where I wanted to cheer depended on where I was gonna go to college. Now that I'm not doing that, I think my, I think I'm more open to a lot of different schools that I might not have been open to because I didn't like their football teams or I didn't want to cheer there or whatever. So I think it's definitely opened a lot of doors and opened my mind, I guess, because I'm not looking just at the cheer aspect. I'm looking at the actual academic aspect and location and all the fun stuff. So I think I really don't know where I want to go to college now. I know I want to major in like business and I don't know exactly yet because my accent has changed a lot and right now people ask me a million things and I'm like, listen y'all, I'm just taking it day by day, focusing on recovery right now, that's all I'm supposed to be doing, so that's what I'm doing and I'm not looking too far in the future because as this accent has taught me, there's no point in planning out your future because it's never going to go how it plans out, so I'm taking it one day at a time. Are you planning on traveling in the future? Absolutely, 100%. I, even before the accident, love to travel. My whole family loves to travel, explore. My dad's a pilot and my grandpa's pilot, so that's kind of uh, in our blood. And I think that with my injury and everything and being in a wheelchair, it's gonna make it a little more difficult. And if I'm being honest, it's gonna make it a lot more difficult, but absolutely, I'm not letting that stop me from chasing my dreams and just exploring the world. So I will be traveling, I think, a lot more than I was going to before because I have less distractions, if that makes sense. And then you might not have known this because I've kept it, I was gonna keep it a secret until I got accepted, but I planned on graduating high school a year early and then I was gonna do a gap year and then go cheer at a college, but I was, planning on applying and going to semester at sea, which if you don't know what that is, it's a study abroad program. Um, and then the one that I was planning on, we we're gonna go to 14 different countries, five different continents, and do all the fun stuff. I think like three different wonders of the world. It was gonna be insane and I was so excited for that. Um, and I think that was gonna like kind of kickstart my traveling the world and uh, like vlogging it travel vlogger, blogger, all that fun stuff. So now that that's not happening or isn't happening right now, I think that I was so excited about that and my friends and my family were so excited about that, that we're still gonna make it happen. It's just gonna look a little different and it might take a little more time for me to do that. I think that's one of the other reasons I'm so excited to be in a manual wheelchair. Y'all might not understand, but I'm in a power wheelchair right now really big and bulky and I just control it with my hand. Um, but with the manual wheelchair, it is more difficult because I have to actually push, but um, with that, I'm able to travel so much easier because it breaks down and I can put it in a car, a train, a bus, um, a boat, like whatever, I'm able to just travel so much more easier. So by accomplishing that goal and being in a manual wheelchair, I'll be able to be that much closer to traveling easier. What is your hardest struggle mentally? Ooh, I think my hardest struggle mentally is like learning the easy things again and like being proud of that because like it's, it's I don't know, it's just annoying because I feel like I'm being babied sometimes, which I know like everything's new and I have a whole new body and I have to learn new things. But when people are excited that I can feed myself or I can brush my teeth or wash my face, it's kind of like, I roll my eyes and I'm like, okay, like whatever, thanks. I could do that when I was like, what, three, four, two, I don't know. Um, but I think it's, that's the hardest part for me is just, it's like the easy things that you don't even think about and you could do when you're multitasking and do so many things, but like being proud of those little things, I think. Um, being like 
I've always been really hard on myself even before the accident. And so I think like being proud of those small moments is difficult for me because I'm like, I should already have been able to do that by now. Like, you know, so I think it's just like being patient and proud of the baby steps is difficult in my brain for me to process. What would you say has been your biggest accomplishment during this journey? I think getting in the manual wheelchair, I don't know. Ooh, I have a few things. Okay, so I'll step back for a second. I think um, like medically speaking, getting off the ventilator and so I don't know if y'all know this. Let me back up again. So I broke my neck, had my surgery. It was good. I didn't need my second surgery, which was amazing. And then I got pneumonia when I was in the hospital because obviously I couldn't move around. And so things started settling in my lungs. So I got pneumonia and so my lungs collapsed and then they were able to get them better and then they collapsed again. And so they had to put a trach in me and I was on a ventilator and I was on, hooked up to so many tubes and my health just got really bad because of my lungs collapsing, collapsing multiple times. So I think I was pretty proud being able to get off the ventilator and get the trach out and then be able to talk and then be able to eat again and like breathe on my own was pretty amazing because some people, once they get on a ventilator, they stay on it for the rest of their lives or some people never get their trach out or some people have to be on feeding tubes the rest of their lives. So seeing the feeding tube out, the trach out, all that was super amazing. I was so proud of myself for that. And then physically speaking, I think I've been very proud of how much my muscles have been able to improve. So I wasn't supposed, they were hopefully trying to get my biceps back. I was able to get my biceps back and work on strengthening them as well as getting my triceps back. And right now I'm working on strengthening them as well as my biceps. Um, and that is like really good because I broke my C6. So I wasn't even supposed to get my triceps back at all. Um, so that's amazing. And then I think just being able to get into a manual wheelchair and really push my arms and work them has been a really big challenge and a struggle. And we didn't even know if I'd ever be able to get in a manual wheelchair, but the fact that I'm able to and working on it is so cool and so amazing. How do you stay so positive? I stay so positive, just believing in something bigger than me. Uh, I'm a Christian as a lot of y'all probably know and probably follow me for that reason maybe, but I just, you kind of have to, I feel like, in situations like this, people who aren't even religious, I feel like they become religious maybe eventually or during the process because it's such a traumatic and crazy accident that you have you have to believe that there's something, there's a reason that this happened and that like you didn't deserve that or, I don't know, I think just believing that it happened for a reason and it was almost, I don't wanna say gifted, but almost gifted to you because you can handle it and you can overcome it and see the bigger meaning behind it, I believe is why I've been able to stay so positive I think another reason is because of y'all and my friends and family, everybody has been so amazing and so supportive that I just can't thank everybody and hug and kiss everybody enough for how much they've been there for me. So I think that being so close to it being so bad made me realize how much there is to be thankful for and just not take anything for granted. I know you've heard that a million times, but once you have an incident that your doctor tells you, I don't know how you live, like you, if it was a little bit worse or if someone tried to move you, like you would have died, it really just puts everything into perspective for you. But the final question I know you've been so excited for, will you ever walk again? You know what, that's a great question. And I, please, 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 please tell me if you know the answer. I'm kidding. Uh, no one knows the answer. I, as much as I hate saying this, no one knows the answer. It's as frustrated as you are, imagine how I feel like 
I'm the type of person, I just want to know. Like, if you tell me something, like, cool, fine, I can handle it. But the fact that I don't know and it's up in the air, not actually, but the fact that it's up in the air and it's not nowhere and it's not yes is so frustrating. I think it goes back to faith and just believing that if I'm supposed to walk again, I'm going to walk again. If I'm not, like, cool, I'll stay in a wheelchair and I'll be just the same person I am in a wheelchair or standing or walking again. Um, I don't know. So my doctors have told me that if someone says I'm gonna walk again, or if someone says I'm not gonna walk again, they don't know what they're talking about. So I'm sorry if you said that. Um, but my doctors and surgeons have told me, you probably don't know what you're talking about because the top spinal cord um, surgeons and doctors don't know. So you might not know, but I don't know. I wish I had an answer, but I don't. So I don't know. We're going to have to see you and I will find out at the same time. With all that being said, I just want to kind of say politely as I can, please stop flooding my DMs and my comments and everything with, will you be able to walk again? Can you walk? When will you be able to walk? If you can't walk like blah, 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 because as you can imagine, it might get kind of annoying. And if I'm not in the right mood or if I'm kind of upset that day, it can be really almost triggering because it's just, it's frustrating. I don't, I don't know, I don't understand. You don't know, you don't understand either. It's just, sometimes it's difficult for me to just see that a million times because it's repetitive and I don't know and we've answered this question before. So I don't know. And I think that sometimes it's frustrating hearing that a million times because I feel like that's all people care about. But it's the same me if I'm sitting in a chair or I'm standing up. So in the long run, it really doesn't matter because it's still me. I'm still going to be able to achieve all my goals um, and things I set out for myself. If I'm in a wheelchair or not, um, I'm not letting that stop me. And... You know what, I think that again, going back, everything happens for a reason. If something's meant to be, it's gonna be. And I just gotta trust in the Lord and he, he's gonna do everything for a reason. With all that being said, thank you so much for watching this. I hope I answered a few of your questions. Uh, obviously I did not answer all y'all's questions. You had so many, which I'm so grateful for. I will definitely be doing more Q and A's uh, in the future. If you want to keep updated with me, you can follow my page, which is just Michaela M. Noble on Instagram. And then I have a fight page, which is like my daily updates, which my older sister Mariah runs. It's Michaela's Fight Official on Instagram. It's about to hit 100K. I'm so excited. Mariah, social media girl. Okay. Um, and then my mom has one on Facebook which was like the OG one that started from the very, very beginning. And I think it's just, what is it? Michaela's Fight. It's Michaela's it's Fight. It's a private group on Facebook, but everybody gets accepted. Yeah, it's just so like, yeah, I don't know. Because it started out family and friends, and now y'all are family and friends as well. So thank you so much, and I'm so excited to take on this journey with y'all. I'm almost three months out from my injury. And I cannot believe everything that we've accomplished so far. And I cannot wait to see what's in the future for me and all of y'all. Bye.